hello there welcome to this video this is a simple demo video in which I'm going to show you how you're going to um, how you can go ahead and uh, track this simple footage in PF track using survey footages and get a good solve so first off uh, this video already assumes that you know a couple of basics about PF track so I'm just going to go ahead skip uh, majority of the small details and directly start tracking the footages so to get started let me go ahead select the main footage which I have this is going to be the main footage I'm going to be working with this is the final output which I actually want and uh, apart from this I also have these additional footages which I'm going to use as survey footages to just help me get a bet much better solve so each one of these have a slightly different camera movement and give me a different kind of parallax so on the first footage I'm just going to go ahead and first set the preset uh, Canon 7D because that's the camera I've used for this so let me go ahead and set it on all these footages so the uh, this camera preset is set what it basically does is set the film back properly so that the focal length value you use is going to give you an exact output so now once that is set the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add in some shutter fix so I can go ahead select this footage and add in a simple shutter fix node so this shutter fix is going to help me get rid of uh, some unwanted deviations uh, in the footage so here I can set the accuracy to normal because there is not a lot of shake in the footage and click analyze so I've just finished with the tracking and I've set the amount of exposure for this footage so what I have to do is go ahead and do the same thing for each one of these footages once so that all of them have the shutter effects like the rolling shutter effect removed from them so let me go ahead and just do that and I'll get back to you so I've just finished with the shutter fix and uh, one of them is actually doing the GPU processing for the shutter fix so let me go ahead and actually start with the lens distortion correction any camera you use pretty much always uh, tends to give you a certain amount of lens distortion so we have to get rid of that too so I'm just going to select one of the shutter fix nodes and here I'm going to use undistort node so the undistort node by default gives you a certain number of options if you have already taken a um, image of a grid or something you can go ahead and start using it to uh, compensate for the shutter fix uh, sorry the lens distortion let me start by adding in a couple of values which are required here so uh, these are values which I've already calculated and it's quite low the amount of distortion but still it's better to get rid of as much of it as possible so I'm just setting in the values so this is the amount of distortion I have and the amount of focal length for the camera is 28 so that is set also so now I have the undistort node set I want to use the same values for all of these footages because all of them are the same I'll just go ahead and connect all of these footages to the same undistort node so it is being processed in the exactly the same manner so now that I have the footage undistorted I can go ahead and uh, connect a user track node to this so let me go ahead and put in a user track and uh, because I have all of these footages I can connect all of them to so that I'm using the rest of the footages as uh, survey footages for each one of the trackings so now as I look at this footage you can observe a couple of things the there are different markers and most of them are in a single plane whereas just one of them is sticking up on top without that one sticking at the top the amount of parallax would be very low so that's the one reason that this one is uh, there and um, you don't really have to track all of these you just need to track enough to get uh, parallax into the scene so let me go ahead and start tracking a few of these uh, the way I'm going to do this is uh, create a couple of user tracks set in a couple of properties for them and uh, use the same properties throughout now create a single user track I'm going to keep it on this blue marker and just to check exactly how this is going to look in different scenarios I'm just going to see the different channels so red channel has so a little bit of contrast uh, green also has a bit of contrast and blue has the maximum contrast so it's better to use all three of these channels for tracking this particular uh, section so I'm just going to keep it there I'm going to center on the footage and uh, I can also reduce the search region size I'll turn on the scale and skew deformation along with rotate and also change the search mode to best speed and uh, let me go ahead and set it to blur and failure threshold I'm going to increase that I'll set the default on that I'll just change the color of this marker to be 
the blue color so that I can know exactly that it's tracking the blue marker and I can go ahead and start tracking it and as you can see the tracker is starting from in between at a 109th frame it's not at any particular frame so I need to track both forwards and backwards so I'm going to go ahead and track it forwards so that is done I can go ahead from here track it backwards I can also go to enhance if I want and uh, use something like denoise or marker enhancement to get this marker enhanced a little bit more so that is not really necessary but I'm, what I'm going to do is use a gamma parameter to just go ahead and reduce the amount of gamma and increase the contrast to get these markers highlighted even more uh, just remember that you don't need to actually have them too highlighted because PF track can easily track whatever we already have here. So I'm going to go ahead track it backwards. I'm centering the view so that I have the marker in the view every single frame. I have just finished tracking this blue marker and if you see this uh, tracking window you'll observe that the tracking marker, the crosshairs of it stays almost exactly at the center on this top corner and it has the exact same distance throughout so it is a very nice track so I'm going to leave it as it is from on this frame and um, I'm going to go ahead and track this pink marker here at the top so let me go ahead and create a new tracking marker I'm going to put it on the pink and center it here I'll also increase the size of the feature and using this I can go ahead and start tracking it now I just change the color of this to pink so I know exactly that this is uh, related only to the top pink marker and as you can see the tracking is happening quite fast right now the reason for this is uh, um, because it's already cached in the footage it can easily track it and also you can notice that the marker keeps stopping or the tracker keeps stopping uh, every single time there is a lot of change the reason being I have increased the failure threshold so that it fails quite easily if the amount of change in the frame is too much so I have this one uh, tracked in on this footage let me go ahead and track the back green one and I'll get back to you in a second so I've also gone ahead and tracked the green marker at the back now one um, uh, last marker I want to track is the one in the front here the green one in the front so I'm going to go ahead and track that one so I'll just go ahead and create I'll put a marker on top I'll increase the size of the feature so it covers the entire one in the frame and because the search region is uh, big enough I'm going to leave it as it is I'm going to change the color to green and track it so now I've finished with tracking the green marker uh, what now I have to do is go ahead and track all of these four for tracking markers in all the rest of the footages because I have three more of them so I'm going to in going into the um, input 2 and I'm going to retrack all of these markers into this footage also because these uh, footages involve the same location I should have similar markers present in here too so you can see the blue marker is over here the back the pink at the top the front green and the back green over here too so let me go ahead and select the blue marker I should be very careful whichever marker I have selected here because as soon as I click into the footage now it's going to recreate that same marker but in this footage and also you can see here that in the clips you have that new footage added in for that marker so you're using the same marker to track you know, several footages and this is going to help the computer give you a much better result so let me go ahead and start tracking this as you can see the tracking is quite nice so I don't really mind a little bit of jerks here and there but it should give me a good looking result so let me go ahead and finish tracking this and I'll get back to you so the blue marker is tracked the next is the pink marker at the top so I've selected the pink marker here and I had to select the pink marker here at the top I'll just center it here and uh, from the last frame I'm going to reverse track it so let me go ahead uh, and uh, finish this and I'll get back to you in a second uh, also one thing to note um, because I have selected the pink marker and clicked on the pink one it's the only thing which has come in uh, by default you have to select the exact marker to get it in and also you can see that the clip has been added into the tracking marker so now the other two markers left the tracker 3 is the one at the back so I'm going to select that I need to increase the feature scale a little bit to encompass the whole thing so once I have that I can go ahead and start tracking it 
So I finished tracking this one too. As you can see, it's quite a good track. It has a little bit of slip, but that's uh, quite all right. So I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to come to the fourth tracking marker, and from any frame, I'm just going to click on the front marker which I have here. Zooming in, I'm just going to set it properly in the center there, and I'm going to finish tracking this. So I finished tracking that one too. So now if you see, I have the same four markers which are tracked in the previous footage, tracked even here. So I have two footages in which I have four markers completely tracked. Till now I have just tracked in only two footages. It's better to have at least one more track in here to get an exact output. So I'm just going to add in one extra uh, tracker uh, right here in the center and um, finish tracking it. So I'm going to go ahead uh, track it on this footage and the next one and I'll get back to you. So I've just finished tracking it on both the footages and now as you can see I have in total five different markers and uh, have tracked two different footages. Now if I want I can go ahead and add in a camera solver into the scene. So selecting the user track I'll go to the create option and over here I can add in a camera solver. So with the camera solver by default uh, the only thing you have to do is just click solve all and when you click solve all you'll immediately start seeing a result if five of your markers are pretty good you should see a result which is quite nice so here I can just go to the errors panel to check and see exactly how much error I have I can go ahead fit this view and as you can see the maximum error I have is about five pixels slip and that happens somewhere here when there is a lot of movement so I can shift over and as you can see this is only the input one which is uh, giving you so much uh, error. Now what I can actually do is uh, put in the second in, uh, second output of the user track into the camera solver also. So all I'm doing is taking the second output of the cam uh, user track, putting it into the camera solver and this time I'm going to resolve the whole thing. So I'm just going to click unsolve and solve all. And as you can see the entire thing just changed and it'll also give you a lot of more a uh, lot more errors. Uh, it's giving you about uh, 7 pixel error. Now there are several ways in which you can actually go ahead and start fixing this but first let's ex exactly see how the errors are come in. I'm going to go ahead select the marker here in the center and tell set origin and uh, select all the markers which form the base and tell I want to set the XZ plane so immediately my grid gets aligned to it. Now as soon as it is set, you can see there is a huge problem. The problem is uh, the entire perspective is reversed. So the computer actually thinks that the table is upside down and it's uh, following the whole track accordingly. So that itself is a mistake. So I don't really want the computer to do that. So and also if I come to the th in the 3D view, you can see that two cameras are present. So both of the footage has have been tracked. Now to correct this, I need ac as much parallax as possible in this scene, and I can actually orient the scene if I want later on. So let me go ahead and add in more parallax by taking both of these pink tracking markers in the front and finish tracking them. So these pink markers, I'm just going to go ahead create a new marker, add them on the pink one. Set the feature size large enough that it uh, covers the whole marker, center it and I can go ahead and track it. So let me just go ahead and change the color. You can give a slightly different color to just so that you know that okay it is a different marker and you're using it for some other um, pattern that you have in your scene. So let me go ahead, I'll finish tracking this, uh, the, both the pink markers in this footage and the next one and I'll get back to you. So I've just gone ahead and added these two markers and I've finished tracking them in both of the footages. So as you can see I have all of these markers tracked and uh, they're present in both the footages. So once I've tracked all of these I can go back to the camera solver and tell it to resolve the whole thing. And as you can see immediately the result is completely different. The, the entire tracking has gone down. Uh, you can see the tracking results is way better this time and most of the tracking um, the quality is below one pixel slip so that's a lot better. Now to set up the view all I need to do is set up the select the center marker set the origin for that. I'll select the three markers in the end and set it as XZ plane. So now you can immediately see how the entire thing is set up. 
Now if I move through, you can see the grid actually aligns perfectly with the table. It is not slipping and it gives me a perfect result. So now I can go ahead and just hit play to see exactly how the footage is going to behave. Now please note that uh, right now I don't have just a track for one camera but I have the tracking for two cameras. So I have both the cameras perfectly set in and they're going to give me the perfect result. Now similarly I can go ahead and add in the other user tracks. I can track the rest of them and have all the four cameras tracked at the same time. And because all of these tracks are the same they're going to uh, correct each other so that you have the most perfect result that you can get. So what I'm going to do now for the final step is go ahead and finish tracking all of these seven markers on the rest of the footages which is the footage 3 and the footage 4 so that I can come back and show you exactly what kind of result I get. So now going into the footage 3 I'll just select in the marker I want the tracker I want and put it on the marker in the proper place and start tracking it. So let me go ahead, I'll finish tracking all of these markers in this video. I'll show them to you once and then show you the trackers in the last uh, video after I've finished. So I have just finished uh, solving the extra two footages but I've not gone ahead and solved all of the tracks. So as you can see in the third footage I've tracked only four of the furthest points. So three of them on a single plane, one on the top and similarly on the fourth. So. Once I have enough tracks like this, I can use less than four uh, tracks to go ahead and uh, get a good solve. So now what I can do is go ahead into the user track. In the camera solver, as you already know, uh, if I go to the 3D view, my two cameras are already present and the error value which I have is very low. So now I can go ahead and take in the user tracks and connect them into the camera solver. And now go ahead and if I solve it once again, you can see that all the tracks are solved immediately and they give me the exact result which is supposed to be and they give it only for so many points. So this is one of the best methods of uh, being able to solve um, content. Uh, it um, gives you a lot of power to be able to have um, uh, so many tracks to um, solve at once. If you have any kind of survey information or any pictures or videos which can give you any hint about the position of different elements, they can really help out in uh, getting a good result. Also you can try using exhaustive searches. So if I go ahead and turn on exhaustive and solve all, it might give me a slightly different result sometimes so it's um, good to check them but of course right now it's not giving any so anyway um, I've uh, finished solving this. Now the main thing is I want to orient it and set it up perfectly. So to do this or what I can do is use orient scene um, option uh, but before that I would like to set up the grid here in this camera solver itself because I don't want to go to the orient scene and um, be uh, bogged down by extra controls for each and every scene. So I'm going to go set the plane and uh, if I want I could have actually set an axis. So let's say this was going to be my Z axis and now I can actually set the plane. So now as you can see the entire table is set and it moves about. I can now set the origin so that the entire grid starts from the origin itself. So now I have this but the grid is not exact. If I move about I should be able to show you. I can see that it shows here that each grid unit is about one meter in length. Whereas I know definitely that this scene is not one meter in length. It's at the wrong scale. So for this I need to use something called the Orient Scene Node. So for this I can go ahead and select the Orient Scene Node and using this I can go ahead and add in all of the camera solves into the same node and once I'm here I can select two of these tracking markers. Uh, these two tracking markers I had already measured the exact distance between them and I had noted it to be 15 centimeters uh, 15 to 16 centimeters so I'm just going to go ahead and add in that value and as you can see the entire grid really uh, went really huge the reason for this being the entire grid is measuring in meters right now. So I can go ahead and decrease the grid size. So I'm back to the exact value which I want. 
Now, uh, the main thing to note, if you are exporting this as a generic format to Maya or any other package, you do not have to set it to 0.016, you can set it to directly 16, uh, because if Maya generic units are 16, it will automatically convert the meters to centimeters and start using it. So, uh, this was about setting this whole thing up. Now, let us say you have oriented the scene and now you want to actually export each one of them out. You can check uh, different scenes to see exactly how they work. And because all of them had the orient scene applied, all of them would be perfectly matched up and give you the exact scenario. So, if you have any kind of um, uh, like you know, multiple cameras which had to match up exactly into the 3D scene, this would be the perfect way to do it. Now, the last thing you'll have to do is um, go ahead, add an export node and start exporting it. Uh, since this is a PLE edition of a PF track, I'll not be able to export it. I just wanted to show you how you can use multiple footages to, give, uh, to get a superb track, to get uh, easy tracks with very less number of points, but still get a very good result. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, I'm uh, posting this video especially for Facebook. So if you have any doubts in here, you can always post them in and I will reply. So uh, saying uh, goodbye. This is Anand here. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching it.